what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to continue along our trend of revisiting components we already learned to build but we're going to build them fully programmatically so in this video we're going to be doing table views so here you see an app we've got a standard table view with an icon so we're going to look at this and we're also going to look at how to get this grouped table view appearance with the colors uh, our, our sections that are split out with some of this padding and this table view is also a system table view that resembles something like the settings app and if we jump back into this we'll also make sure it fully supports dark mode uh, since that's basically a requirement these days so that said make sure you destroy that like button and subscribe button as always before we jump into it get xcode ready get excited and let's dig in quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna pick a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, table view in code. Make sure your language is set to Swift uh, at the bottom there. Go ahead and create and save the project. We'll throw it onto the desktop to get started. And once Xcode decides to stop being slow, we will jump right in. So I've already got the simulator opened up here. It's in dark mode. You can hit Command Shift A to switch light and dark. But let's first start by coming up here, picking a simulator. Uh, and actually I'll pick that 11 Pro Max since I've got it open already. I hit that run button to just build and run it. That way we don't have to sit here and wait for it as we develop. Uh, and we're gonna be working in the view controller. So you'll see that this uh, loads and boots up right here and let's get into it. So uh, as you saw in the beginning of the video, we're gonna create two table views. And one of them is gonna be a standard looking one with images, uh, icons, uh, and labels. And the other one is gonna be the grouped style, which is uh, actually the type of uh, table view that you usually see in something like the settings app where it, it has sections. And if you put it into dark mode, you see that it gets this uh, separated section coloring. Uh, and we'll look at how to get that for free, uh, quote unquote, to make it look like the system. So let's do the basic one first. So let me put this back into light mode. Whoops, Command Shift A. And this one's pretty straightforward. So we wanna create a table view programmatically. So I'm gonna say let table view is a UI table view. And we're gonna use this anonymous closure pattern to create the table. And if you're not familiar with this pattern, I've got a separate video on it. I encourage you to look at that. But basically it's just a cleaner way to uh, organize your static setup code for any object. We create the table view, we're gonna return it. And before we return it, we wanna register a cell to the table view. We're gonna use the basic table view uh, cell.self, which is the base class. We're not gonna look at custom cells in this video. I've got tons of videos on that. So let's go ahead and register that for the identifier of cell, all lowercase. Uh, next up, we want to add this as a sub view. So we're gonna say add sub view to this view controller's view, the table view. We also want to set the table views data source. And we'll also go ahead and set its delegate, even though we're not gonna really work with the delegate, but we'll go ahead and set it regardless. Next up, we're gonna want to give the table view a frame. So go ahead and override view did layout sub views. Call super view did layout sub views. And we're gonna say the table views frame is gonna be the entirety of the screen. So this view controllers views.bounds. Uh, next up, it's gonna complain at us, which it already is in regards to not conforming to the protocol. So let's go ahead and conform to the UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. And you'll see that we're gonna get warnings whether an error up here. And the reason is we need to add the required functions for the data source. So go ahead and hit the error, hit fix. 
And I'm just going to move these down here to make this a little more organized. And let's go ahead and return a static number of uh, rows that we're going to have. We'll go with 100. And for this function, we want to get a cell. So we're going to say cell equals table view. DQ reusable cell with an identifier. Our ID is cell, and that's coming from right here where we registered a cell. And uh, actually, we're going to also want to add four index path. And we're going to return the cell. And let's go ahead and set a label on the cell like you saw in the beginning of the video. So we're going to say text label dot text is hello world. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, interpolate in here the current cell position. We're going to say plus one since this guy starts at zero. And let's see, we're also going to set a image. So let's go ahead and say cell dot image view. And we're going to say its image is a UI image with a system name. And if I'm not mistaken, house is one of the images that we have. And let's go ahead and also set a tint color on this. We'll say its tint color is going to be a system, so the system green. And let's go ahead and hit Command R. Let's see what that looks like. Let's build it. All right, cool. So we've got our icon here. We've got our text. If we throw into dark mode with a Command Shift A, you can see that everything adjusts appropriately. In this case, just the background and the label color. Now, if we wanted to add sections and also get that grouped uh, look and feel, uh, we need to change a couple things. So one thing I'll show here before we get into that second table is if we override number of sections, and let's just say we have two sections. And if you go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, you'll see that we do in fact actually have two sections. And let me decrease this actually so it's easier to see. So we're gonna say we've got three rows in each section, so a total of six. You'll notice that we actually do have two sections here, but you can't really visually distinguish them. Uh, there's two problems here. One problem is whether well, there's two aesthetic nuances here, I should say, not really problems. Uh, the first one is the cells aren't really colored to be grouped. And the second thing is there's no separation. So let me uh, undo this and let's set up that other controller and let's see how to get the other appearance to look like the settings app. So right now we've got this one controller. So I'm going to go ahead and embed this in a tab bar controller so we can add another screen. So we are going to want another view controller. So let's go ahead and hit new file, go go touch class, and this will be a subclass of a UI view controller. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this second view controller. Make sure it's in Swift, make sure storyboard uh, is not checked. And what we could probably actually even do is we can be lazy and copy all the code in this first view controller that we wrote. We're just gonna edit it. Go ahead and paste that in here. Uh, the one thing I recommend doing is Command A and then Command uh, or the Control A, Control I that will fix your indentation. And let's see, let's go ahead and call this uh, second view controller, uh, which it is already. And we want to conform to the table view delegate and the table view data source to get these errors to go away. And let me also go ahead. And let's see, read.conform, UI table view delegate, got that typo right there. This guy should go away now, beautiful. Let's add a title here, call it grouped. And we wanna set up the tab bar controller in the storyboard. So let's go in here to the main.storyboard and we are going to grab a, uh, another view controller in a second, but let's first select this controller, come up to your toolbar, hit editor, and from here, you want to go to embed in and go ahead and pick a uh, tab bar controller. And as you can see now, it automatically adds a tab bar controller and links our first controller that we had here. We're going to want a second controller. So go ahead and hit this little plus and search for a UI view controller, drag it on in and go ahead and control drag from the tab bar controller to this guy. The relationship is view controller. And we just want to set this, this controller's class to second view controller. So select it up here, open up the attributes inspector, uh, hit this tab, and you want to change its class to be second view controller. So if you go ahead and hit command R now, you'll see we have two tabs at the bottom. 
I don't think they actually, yeah, they don't really have uh, images or icons, but if we switch between them, we'll see we have the exact same controller. And the reason we say the same controller is because we were lazy and copy and pasted it. So let's, uh, let's see how to change this up. So first and foremost, I'm gonna return way fewer cells. Let's say 10. Let's also change the tint color here to be system blue. And let's just go ahead and hit Command R just to make sure we do have our two controllers showing up properly. That's the first one and that's the second one. So now how do we work with a grouped business? So it's pretty simple. The first thing you wanna do is override the sections function that we looked at in the other controller. And that is number of sections. And go ahead and return, let's just do like five in this case. And the important thing that you wanna do is when you create this table view, you actually want to create it with a style. So you want this constructor, and by default, the frame of this will be zero, and the style is going to be grouped. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the default one is plain, and that's what we see in the first controller. Now, of course, we don't want it to have a zero frame, but we define it here, but once again, we are resetting it here, so the table view takes up the whole screen. So if you go ahead and run it now, and if we put it into light mode by hitting Command Shift A, you can see this one is our standard plain one. And this one now not only has the subtle background color, but it added this divider in for us. And if we change this to dark mode, uh, if you look at it now, it looks a lot like the settings app. And the styling and this coloring, you get, like I was saying, quote unquote for free, because the group style on the table view itself is capable of handling it and that way it really looks like a first party system table view uh, and the reason is is because it actually is and before we wrap up this video the other thing that i'll show uh, two other things really quickly is right now when you select a cell it stays highlighted the reason is is we need to override one of the delegate functions and that is then select row at index path and we're going to go ahead and on the table view say table view deselect row at index path, animated true. And the other thing you'll notice is some table views have a little arrow over here. It's called an accessory item. So on our cell, we can actually go ahead and add one. So we can say cell.accessory type, and it's an enum. So there's quite a few to choose from. The little arrow is a detail or disclosure uh, indicator, detail disclosure button. Uh, I always forget if it's this one or the other one, but I guess I'll find out they're named very similarly. So if we go to this one, we see actually we get uh, this little info thing. So I believe it's actually the other one. Let's see, we want the disclosure indicator. So let's see, that should be our little arrow. Awesome, so that's our little arrow right there. And there you have it. That's how you can create a table view programmatically. Now obviously setting up custom cells, sizing, coloring, there's a whole lot you can do here. and. Uh, table views kind of uh, grow exponentially as you add more functionality. So I've got a bunch of videos on them across the channel for all the mentioned topics. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button already, don't forget to do so. It helps, you, helps out the YouTube algorithm quite a bit. It helps promote the video, the channel, uh, helps me make more content for all of you, most importantly. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure to do, do that as well for a daily Swift videos. Comment with any questions, feedback, suggestion. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.